morning my dear friends my dear friends uh, today we are here to understand about the law optional course i myself my name is dr m satyakumar i am a practicing advocate at the madras high court and also supreme court and uh, my areas of specialization is uh, not only criminal uh, criminal laws and civil laws but also expanding my scope on the economic offenses like uh, uh, income tax gst uh, prevention of money laundering act binami properties uh, prohibition of binami properties transaction act and uh, in <coughs> in my individual capacity i have filed many pals on the matters of governance uh, with respect to governance uh, not only in madras high court but also in the matter of in the supreme court as well so this is my background i have uh, before my law i completed my ca cws and uh, i completed my uh, bachelor's in law then masters in law and i have done my phd in law so uh, this in phd in law that to in taxation that to in international taxation so this is my background and uh, today session we are going to see how law option is one of the best option for upsc so just wanted to understand how many of them how many of them here are from law background completed law okay which college are you from you completed which year you completed june okay from tirupati you have come today okay but you are from chennai oh you wrote but you are attending this class okay <coughs> school of excellence which year you completed okay Oh, LLB honors. Okay. Uh, so how many of them? How many people are coming online? Eleven members. Okay. Chat box. Can you open one of them? Okay, my dear friends who are online, can you please uh, please ping me? I think there are about how many students are coming? Thirteen students. Okay, uh, people who are attending online, can you please ping me? Are you from law background or from other backgrounds? Mr. Ajay, you are from law background. Okay. Amrita Vashini, are you from law background? So, how many of them from law background? Okay. Lara, are you from law background? No. Okay, Monisha. Rutra, okay. Uh, Subhashni, Surya, Madhumita, are you from law background? <coughs> okay. Voice correct, Pandu Ma. Ilka, sorry, Pandu Ma. Can we take it again, Pandu Ma? Doubt. Okay. My dear friends, the law optional of the UPSC program is just not for the law students. 
even it can be taken up by any other students also if you are a law student it is even more easy because if you are a law student law option can be taken up taken up by you and you should you should take law option because considering the fact that you have done your bachelor's of law for at least 5 years in the bachelor's law in the bachelor's of law that you have done llb or bl whatever may be that 5 years you have, would have spent for uh, spent time on the law subjects so accordingly in the upsc there are uh, many factors which are in favor of you if you are a law student if you still not a law student but still you are interested in law as a common citizen that interest is enough to take up law option in the upsc uh, upsc preparation and the uh, law option optional paper decides your uh, success in the upsc exam the law option decides your success in the upsc exam and uh, highest success rate we can see among the students who have taken up law option highest success rate we can see among the students who have taken up law option and we will analyze and i'll let you know how what is the success ratio first uh, advantage of law option is the smaller syllabus smaller syllabus i'll explain about the syllabus second it is very scoring it is very scoring <coughs> third it is also with a high success ratio it is also with high success ratio and the law optional subjects have a overlap with the gs as a overlap with the gs and uh, it also and you know well upsc being a, a subject to paper subject to paper writing skill is very important writing skill is very important being a law student or people who are interested in law even if you go and check hindu editorial hindu paper you are, as a upsc student you should be updated about current affairs the best writers are lawyers best writers are lawyers because every day basis the role of a lawyer is writing speaking and then uh, discussing about subject and that too when you are practicing somebody is practicing in high court or supreme court there is no option but english only so eventually one good thing about law option is people who take up law option from other background like engineering or other background or who are from law background itself one advantage that will come to you in handy is the english proficiency along with your writing skill along with your writing skill and uh, it is not merely a uh, law that is important but what is important is the philosophy behind that law philosophy behind that law so what could be uh, the for example even if you would have completed law or you are from a non law non law background it does not make a difference in upsc because of a single reason when we are taught in school college about each and every subject like crpc or C, uh, civil procedure code or family law or banking law they only taught the procedure of the law they only taught the procedure of the law but they would not have taught you uh, what is the philosophy behind that law philosophy behind that law take for example representation of the people act 1951 representation of the people act 1951 there is section 134a under the representation of people act if you go and check section 134a of the representation of people act it says that uh, any uh, any serve, any uh, any person in the service of the government cannot act as a election agent election agent any uh, person in service of government it is not government servant in service of government cannot act as a election agent this is what is that section section 134a as a law student in your college they would have taught you about 134a as just one line like this but you will not know the philosophy behind it you will not know the philosophy behind it they will not have explained you why this section came what is the intention of this section why who, because of whose mistake or what development happened in the country that this 134a came they would not have explained they would not have explained but what is the difference between law to uh, law optional program of upsc is the philosophy behind the philosophy behind every law and every provision that is brought under the uh, syllabus of upsc syllabus of upsc i hope now you understand what is the approach of a law student and what is the approach of law optional approach of a law student is you will buy a small book before the exam you will study you will go and write with some case laws without understanding the philosophy behind the law philosophy behind the law for example take for example uh, act like prevention of money laundering act 2002 
prevention of money laundering act 2002 it came from 2005 that act came in 2005 if you go and ask a law student he will not say why it came what was the background behind that prevention of money laundering act how globally that prevention of money laundering act was uh, there maybe not even 99 percent of the law students will know this but being a law optional student what you will understand is very interesting how the prevention of money laundering act the jurisprudence evolved why it came what is financial action task force what is the vienna convention and why prevention of money laundering act 2002 was brought in india only in 2005 not in 1980 now how the uh, prevention of money laundering act is shaping up what is the prevention of money laundering act vis a vis the constitution of india like that you will know the philosophy behind every law and every provision you understood or not of course prevention of money laundering act 2002 is not part of your syllabus but i'm trying to explain you whatever is part of your syllabus whatever is part of your uh, upsc law option has practical relevance in fact by preparing for law option you will actually become a better lawyer actually if you even continuing as a lawyer by preparing for law option if you become successful in the UPC examination your contribution of nation will be much more better because every day you have to pass geo every day you have to deal with hundreds of government orders every day you have to deal with signing of documents on your desk that is all about administration and when you are signing it you will know how even the judiciary will look at those government orders did you understand or not so that is where most of the people who choose other optionals will not be able to appreciate much how those uh, government orders whether it is constitutional or not so there are four six advantages by choosing law option six advantages by choosing law option first is smaller syllabus in upsc you are already loaded with so much of syllabus but choosing law option you have a smaller syllabus second it is very very scoring because it is a direct question i'm going to prove you how many times the same question has appeared from 19 <coughs> from 1970 uh, onwards from 1970 onwards to 2023 how many times i'm going to demonstrate today how many times the same question has appeared again and again this is a very rare situation in any other optional in the upsc generally in other optional paper you will not find for same question getting repeated again and again same question almost same answer same question almost same answer because there would be some supreme court judgment which will have an impact on that provision or impact on that constitutional provision or impact on that uh, particular section very rarely and that supreme court judgment will completely transform that completely will uh, will have a different outlook altogether on that particular provision very rarely it happens very rarely it happens accordingly law option by choosing law option you have very very high success ratio very very high success ratio second uh, the fourth important thing overlap with your gs paper you have gs2 paper which is nothing but indian polity and uh, the constitution and other subjects which are almost law which is almost law even the governance subject is law even your governance subject is law ethics subject is law so by appreciating law optional paper you will be able to appreciate the end almost uh, every other paper of the gs every other paper of the gs uh, very well because everything is a procedure everything is a content everything is a content and your writing skill improves enormously your writing skill improves enor enormously for example i teach in the morning near indian polity people who are from law background i see them really taking notes very well because in five years period when they studied for bachelor's program of law bachelor's of law they have been keep on writing there is nothing beyond writing there is nothing beyond writing in law there is no diagram in law there is no diagram in law there is no uh, presentation in the diagram model yes or no it's all about content it's all about content and interpretation and analysis so this is a great advantage if you are uh, taking up law option and then ease of preparation you need not refer multiple books there are very simple books which you can refer and accordingly the notes of the class is more than sufficient to clear your examination uh, generally people who take up law law option are of two types one is law graduate taking up law option it is not mandatory even those students who are not from law background still can take up law optional i know one student in india in the last batch he got selected who uh, who has completed 
the UPSC and scored a, a rank who is from a medical background, who is from a medical background. Why, I mean, we ask him why did he choose law over the uh, subject that he should have chosen. <coughs> he says, success in the UPSC exam is more important than what law option you, what option you are choosing. You understood or not? Success in the UPSC is more important than what option you are choosing. So, accordingly, the law option is a blue ocean strategy. Blue ocean strategy. When I say blue ocean strategy, by choosing law option program, you will actually differentiate yourself from the crowd so that you can score and uh, qualify to the UPSC program. UPSC program. Second, many law students, uh, when we ask them, why are you taking up a PSIR? or any other law option, they keep saying, sir, I am taking because I already studied 5-year law and then I studied law continuously, now it is boring to study. In UPSC, you should not be bored to study the law option which you studied for 5 years. Ultimately, why are you preparing for UPSC? Do you get any certificate by preparing for UPSC? Do you get any uh, valid, uh, any uh, uh, management degree or management degree kind after preparing for UPSC? What do you get out of the UPSC? Result. What do you get out of the UPSC? Result and the knowledge, the minimum knowledge that you prepare for. And if you don't get a result, is there any validation of that uh, program? Answer is no. You get a knowledge, that's all. The knowledge is premium knowledge of the UPSC preparation, which you can use for many various other things by understanding the holistic picture of the UPSC preparation. But ultimately, what is important? Ultimately, what is important? Scoring marks is important. Scoring marks is important. Ultimately, what is important? Qualifying for UPSC is important. Ultimately, what is important? Rank is important. So, the subject what you studied for 5 years, if you are able to study and, and then prepare for law option and then qualify for UPSC, nothing like it. Correct or not? Second, even for non-law students, by choosing law option, you have the certainty of the question. What is that called? Certainty. The other subjects, there is no certainty, but here, I, I am I, I am going to prove you that in law option, same question got repeated multiple times. Same question got repeated multiple times. Accordingly, <coughs> see for example, I told about the first factor, smaller size of syllabus, smaller size of syllabus, smaller size of syllabus. For example, it does not include code of criminal procedure. It does not include code of criminal procedure. It does not include civil procedure code. It does not include civil procedure code. It does not include evidence act. All the three got changed now in new new syllabus. A uh, new uh, uh, laws have come. Bharatiya Nyaya Sanita 2023. Bharatiya Nagarik Suraksha Sanita 2023. Then you have Bharatiya Sakshi Adiniyam. Uh, Sakshi Adiniyam 2023. All these are new act. These new acts are not uh, uh, not provided as a procedure as part of your law option. Can you, can you look at the uh, opportunity? In the entire law program of five years, that subject which was so boring was civil procedure code. Yes or no? It will be slow. You will not understand. There will be multiple orders. Not interesting. But criminal procedure code would have been very interesting. It depends upon the faculty who taught you. At the same time, the, you see that justice in criminal procedure code is faster than the civil procedure code. The civil procedure code is all about is all about procedure in the court. Okay, you have multiple opportunity, ex parte order happens, you still have to go and you can still uh, set aside the ex parte order and continue with the case. But whereas with respect to criminal procedure code, you would have seen very interesting concepts discussed. Accordingly, all three acts are not provided in detail in law option. Did you understand or not? Your basic knowledge that you have or non-law students, even if they scratch, uh, start, uh, start from scratch, still they can understand only few concepts of law of crimes is provided as part of the syllabus. Concepts of law of crimes is provided as part of the syllabus. And second, how many months you need for law option? Straightforward law option requires only four months to prepare. How many months you need for law option? Four months. Why four months is enough? 
may be other options may not may consume more time but law option will not consume more time for a simple reason for a simple reason because of uh, clear syllabus in uh, clear, clear syllabus and content clear syllabus and content and you have a structured approach you have a structured approach and repeated question come in the examination repeated question come in the examination if you hardly prepare 200 to 300 questions that is more than sufficient that will come in the examination 300 questions maximum <coughs> 300 question 150 words to 200 words if you prepare you are done with law option. You are done with law option. So, how many questions you have to prepare? And how many questions I have to teach you in the class? How many questions I should teach you? 300 question maximum. 300 question I can teach you in four, uh, four months class. And you will also write that essay. If I teach you for 300 questions and you write that essay and get acquainted, you are done with optional paper. You are done with optional paper. And current affairs with respect to legal law optional is supreme court judgments mostly supreme court judgments and supreme court judgment are the important legal updates and hardly how many supreme court judgment will come in four months time you tell me how many supreme court judgments will come even in a year supreme court operates for 280 days how many how many how many days it operates 280 days 280 days, all 280 days landmark judgments don't come. Everything is a landmark judgment of the Supreme Court. But all 280 days judgments don't come. So, in a year, when a student is writing law optional, in a UPC preparation, in a year, ideally, maximum important judgments will be 50 judgments. 50 judgments. 50 judgments are 50 questions. 50 judgments are 50 questions and do not and that too not procedural uh, procedural aspects of supreme court judgment only constitutional questions of the supreme court judgment that are asked that is state of law that is called state of law that means to prepare for law optional totally all subject put together all subject put together in the entire syllabus put together it is only 350 questions you have to prepare how many questions 350 questions the boundary is clear the boundary is clear Whereas, in many other subjects, people are taking up, it, the boundary is not clear. The boundary is not clear. The greatest advantage for qualifying any exam is to know where is the boundary. Where is the boundary? You are walking on a road. If you don't know where is the destination, it is very difficult to know, but people still explore and then find out the destination. Here, if you put your hard work in a certainty of boundary, you know the destination higher of the curve. You understood or not? So, 350 questions if you prepare. In other subjects, even if you prepare 350 questions, you will not know where the question will come. You understood or not? Subjects are vast. Here, it is not like that. Law option is the best option for UPSC students uh, who are all taking law option as a passion. It is not just law students. Even it can be non-law students. It can be non-law students. And uh, there is a connectivity to the society. There is a connectivity to the society. You can get involved in the subject, get involved in the subject. For example, what is the difference between science uh, uh, subjects and the law subject? Is that most of the time you will understand the science subject. You cannot get involved into it. There is a, for example, some scientific fact comes, you will try to understand the facts. But whereas in law subject, you can get into the role and understand the law. You understood or not? For example, there is a portion of organized crime under the new law. What is mean by organized crime? What are, what are the factors which determines organized crime? If organized crime happens, what, what are the provisions to be brought in FIR? You will see many uh, organized crime happening around you in the society. And by understanding it, you will understand the provision. Yes or no? So the visualization of the subject is easy with respect to law optional. The visualization of the subject is easy with respect to law optional. Accordingly, <coughs> smaller size of syllabus. <clears throat> the syllabus of uh, law optional is constitutional administrative law, international law, law of crime. Law of crime means not criminal procedure code or Bharati and Nyaya Sanita 2023 or Bharati Nagarik Sanita 2023. It is on the principles of law of crimes. Principles of law of crimes. Then comes law of thought. 
law of contract and special contract clause. That is all. So, you have constitutional law, administrative law, international law, then you have law of crime, law of thought, law of contract and special contract set, special contract set. And in law option, you can easily get 300 marks. You can easily get 300 marks. It is far better than other options like uh, geography or social, sociology because on the two grounds, one is past percentage of people, past percentage of people taking up law option is very high. I can show you the data. I have the data with me. Two, people actually getting selected is very high from the law option. This fact is not known to many. This fact is not known to many. See, in a cricket, you know well where is the four, uh, boundary for four and six. So you will plan accordingly, okay, if I hit with this speed, that ball will reach the boundary. But when you don't know the boundary, you will have to hit the speed at which maximum possible by you, by stretching. You understood or not? Your energy has to be like, I will hit with the maximum speed, I hope the ball will go to the boundary. That is other optional. But as law optional, you know the boundary well. What is the boundary? 350 questions is the boundary. And you hit the ball, you know exactly at what speed you can hit. When you have this confidence in two subjects that you can score 300, then what happens is it contributes to the other general papers. Because the energy is saved here. The certainty is fixed here. Accordingly, other subjects you can perform really well. You understood or not? Ultimately, in law, as a law optional student, you have the energy consumed equally among all the subjects. You understood or not, my dear friends? Accordingly, the success rate for the... Why the success rate for law option is high? It's not because uh, the law optional students are special. But law option as a boundary, as a fixed limit. Within the fixed limit, you can, you can very well prepare and hit uh, the boundary easily and perform well. And if you do a proper practice, then even that uh, difficulty of uh, giving up energy will become interesting because of the fact that you, you know while preparing itself, you, can, you will be selected. You understood or not? While preparing itself, you know that you will be selected. With the joy of that, you can prepare for the examination. One, for a single reason, the boundary is clear. Why, why, why I am saying that boundary is clear? 350 questions is the maximum thing you should prepare. Maximum. 350 essays you have to prepare. So accordingly, law optional in UPSC have, in recent years have much higher success ratio compared to subjects having subjects having 100 or more students appearing in the mains examination. In the recent report, that is 69th uh, UPSC report, which I saw, it has, it has been highest, that is 14% of people who qualified are from law optional. How many people? 14%. My dear friends, out of 100 students who saw, got selected from different optionals, 14% is from law option, which is a very high ratio. Do you agree or not? And 14% and very less people attending, but 14%. People who choose law option is very less. It is not in uh, lakhs or uh, thousands of people in the country. Very less people choose law optional. People who chose less, but they contributed 14% of success. Do you understand? Very less people attending law option, writing from law option, and people who attempted from law option are very less, but success ratio of a success ratio from them is very high. It shows that law option is the strategically good subject to be taken up for success in the UPC examination. And this has been consistently increasing every year. This has been Consistently increasing every year. For example, <coughs> next comes at least three sections. At least three sections out of uh, network earlier. Yeah? Fourth factor <coughs> is at least section of compulsory paper in civil service 
have common with law optional. I will going to, I am going to give you the common uh, areas of law optional paper with the GS paper. I am going to discuss about the common areas. Three parts are GS paper 2 and then GS paper 3, GS paper 2, GS paper 3 and SA. Almost 50% of compulsory paper can be studied along with law option. So, law option by studying you get 300 minimum and the same portion only is there in GS paper also. You understood or not? So, here 300, there 50% of the portion is the same portion what you study for law option. So, by studying for law optional program, you cover both the content of GS2, GS3, SA. Here also you cover the optional. Both the horses together, your confidence increases. You are not going to prepare twice. So, that means 350 questions that you are going to prepare is just not for law optional program but also for GS paper 2, GS paper 3 and SA. You understood or not? You understood or not my dear friends? So, this puts you into the higher success ratio in the UPC exam. This puts you into the higher success ratio in the UPC exam. So, taking law option automatically gives you an edge. And uh, I will show you the, maybe in the network of the, You work on Are they a problem running? No internet connection. Work on me. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> My dear friends, I am going to discuss about the success uh, rate. In UPC, uh, so for example, in UPC 2012, the success rate of the students who appeared from law optional program is appeared is 246 uh, and then qualified is 43. Appeared 246, qualified is 43. Then UPC 2013, I am going to give data. Okay, so I am going to prove with the data. Whether law option is successful or not. Students with law option is successful or not. Candidates who appeared 144 only appeared. Out of which 35 students got selected. How many people got selected? 35 students got selected. 24.3 percentage in 2013. 24 percentage. 
Then in 2014, candidates appeared are 253. How many people? 253. 49 people got selected from law optional. 19% passed. 19% got selected. 19% got selected. Then in UPSC 2015, 245 students appeared and 41 qualified. 41 qualified. Then in UPSC 2016, 313 students appeared and 22 students qualified. How many people qualified? 22 students qualified. In UPSC 2017, candidates who appeared were 304 and 43 students qualified. 14.14 percentage got qualified. Then in UPSC 2018, 201 students appeared and 27 got qualified. 27 got qualified. In UPSC 2019, Total number of students who appeared were 186 and 19 got qualified and this 10.21. In the last year, it's about 14% who got qualified. The before year, about 13% got qualified. So I have data with me to prove. If you're saying so, no sir, law option is very tough. Minimal number of people appearing, more number of people passing. In the overall uh, uh, selection also, minimum 14% on average people get selected from law option. So this is the data. I have with me. Whereas, take for example 2017, <coughs> I randomly checked. In 2017, optional subject, law, medical and commerce and sociology, I compared with them. The least number of students appearing as a <coughs> optional program is law option. 304, candidate recommended 43, success rate 14%. Success rate is 14%. Whereas, if you see, Public administration, 1,165 students appear. How many students appear? 1,000. How many got recommended? 170 students got recommended. And 10.2 percentage only. Sociology, 1,421 students appear. And then 137 students selected. Whereas, 304 law students appear, law optional students appear, 43 to percentage get selected. You understood or not? So by choosing law option, you not only know the boundary, but you are also clear. Once you prepare well, you can get selected for sure. Once you can get, you can get selected for sure. Okay. Right. Next is, let me compare the overlap of GS paper with the law option. I am going to do some sampling work. So to prove you, what you study there, only you have to study there. What you study here, only you have to study there. First, Take for example, 2020 CSC mains question. CSC mains question. The judicial system in India and UK seem to be covering as well as diverging in the recent times. Highlight the key points of coverage and divergence between the two nations in terms of their judicial practices. Answer in 150 words. This question has appeared in the law option paper for five times previously. Now, in the 300 questions that you are preparing, this question will anyway prepare essay. Literally, you can convert the law optional paper in like a school guide. Have you seen school guide where you will prepare 100 questions for subject and keep on writing for quarterly exam, offerly exam, revision exam, revision 2, revision 3. Finally, you write the public exam. When you are writing the public exam, the flow will happen automatically. Literally, you remember the page. Yes or no? That will happen in case of your law option. That will happen in case of your law option. Then... Judicial legislation is uh, antithetical to the doctrine of separation of powers as envisaged in the Indian constitution. In this context, justify filing of large number of public interest litigation praying for issuing guidelines to executive authorities. Question is directly related to the law optional paper till public interest litigation. In optional, we do, not do, we do a very, very detailed study of pill which other optional people might not know. You understood or not? Then... This question appeared in GS paper. But you will study in detail about pill in where? Law option. By studying detail in law option, your answer of the GS is per perfected. Yes or no? And because of that, you will not only score in law option, but also score in GS paper. That's what I am trying to compare and tell you. Like this, many uh, overlapping subjects I can map and give you. For example, International Economic Organization. 
like uh, WTO, World Bank, these are all having relevance in GS Paper 3. GS Paper 3. What is GS Paper 3? What is GS Paper 3? Science and <coughs> all those organizations, trial by media, all those organizations, you study still in optional 2, law option 2. Then you have improved writing skills in law optional. Writing skills play a major role. Every editorial of Hindu will be written by lawyers. Have you seen? Why? Because their writing skills are essential part of a lawyer. So, accordingly, writing skills will be improved automatically. Your writing skills matters in your UPSC. So, accordingly, it is, it will also improve the writing skills. Then we will come to ease of preparation. It is very important. Preparation, whether it is easy or tough, is the first question. Subject is tough or easy, doesn't matter. Preparing itself is easy or not is a question. Yes or no? Accordingly, preparing for any optional requires lot of material resources. But in case of uh, uh, law optional uh, UPSC there are a lot of books available in the market nowadays you may not have a subject wise approach only for exclusive UPSC but I will try to provide in my class about notes which are exclusive for every subject that is more than sufficient but you can still refer for many I will be keep saying in the class for this particular content for example PAL content IGNU PAL content is nice P IGNU PAL content, IGNU, you know, IGNU, no? They have published a PAL content separately. That content is more sufficient for preparing for UPSC, PAL alone. Like that, I have selected various expert material. That expert material will flow out of my lecture. That lecture will form part of your notes. After you take notes, you go back and prepare essay from the material I have referred to. And the lecture I gave, you understood or not, it's a three-step process. First step, I will tell you what is the material I am referring. Second, I have my own material to project, that is dictate or speak. Third, you have my material, I have already referred one material. Now you take both and go home or you do a homework of neatly writing that essay every day. That's all finished. You understood or not? Like this 300 questions in four, 4 months time, 4 and a half months time is more than sufficient for you to qualify in the UPSC examination. You understood my dear friends? So, uh, the, uh, these factors, that is smaller syllabus, very scoring, high success ratio, overlap with GS, writing skill improves and then ease of preparation, ease of preparation. Let us do syllabus analysis now. Let us do syllabus analysis. The syllabus analysis, probably if you want to write, you can write. People who are online, you can uh, write down as well. Maybe in another uh, 20 minutes, we will understand this and close and we will take up questions. We will take up questions, doubts about law optional. <coughs> syllabus is very, very simple syllabus. You have constitutional law. 2. Administrative law, 3. International law, 4. You have the law of crime, you have law of tort, you have contract law and mercantile law and finally you have contemporary legal development, contemporary legal development. These are the syllabus. My dear friends, what are the steps for preparing law option? Step 1, understanding syllabus. Step 1, 
You understood the syllabus now. These are the syllabus. Totally about 8 to 7 laws are there. That's all. You are understanding the syllabus. Then get back to the college again. See, for example, after completing 5th standard, 6th standard, uh, six, when you come to 6th standard, 4th standard becomes easy. When you come to the 10th standard, 8th standard becomes easy. Have you ever felt when you are studying a 10th standard, now if I study 8th standard, I will be rank 1. Have you felt that way? Now, while you are studying 12th standard, 11th standard becomes easy. While you are studying 12th standard, 5th standard becomes easy. Is it still difficult? Okay. Like that, 5 years of law, you have completed one circle. In this circle, 2 things would have happened to you. 3 things would have happened. There are some faculties who inspired you about the law. There are some faculties who made all the subjects boring. Whatever they thought. There are subjects where you had no help, but you studied on yourself. There are subjects where you wrote something in the examination, you got the mark. These things would have happened. There are subjects where you loved the subject because you understood that subject and you were able to deliver in the examination. And you got the best marks. There's the other possibility you wrote well, but you didn't get mark. With this all combination, you got exposed to the subject already in place. For one semester, six subjects should have studied. Out of five, uh, totally five years, how many semesters were there? Ten semesters. How many papers per semester? Five. Five into ten, how many subjects you studied? Fifty-seven subjects you studied, yes or no? Is fifty-seven subjects coming in law optional? How many subjects are coming? And only out of 50, uh, totally 10, uh, 10 semester, 5 uh, papers, uh, how many questions would have been there to ask you the question? It is an unlimited question, correct? Yes or no? But here I am saying only 350 questions and success rate is very high in the UBC preparation. Accordingly, get back to the college. Read the material, don't throw your material, college material. Now go and check where you have your college material. For example, paper like constitution, subject like constitution, it is not even college level that they are asking. My dear friends, law optional here in UPSC is not for law students. You understood or not? It is anybody who is taking law optional. If the intention of the UPSC was only for the law student, then it would have become very tougher. You understood or not? You understand that first. Sarah, you, you are a law student. Whether UPSC is stopping you from taking uh, PSIR, you are a law option student. Whether UPSC is stopping you from taking any other subject, public administration and any other subject, no. Similarly, non-law students also can come to law option and qualify or not. If it would have been very tough, how, how a science student will qualify in law option? So it is as simple or very basic even compared to your college. But what is the difference I told you? College, they did not teach about philosophy of law. Philosophy of law. Philosophical mind should be developed here. Why? How? What? For example, you see the word called social justice in uh, Constitution of India. Immediately you should go back and check how the social justice got evolved and how it has got into the affirmative action of the Constitution of India. My students who are attending my Indian polity class, you go and check with them. They will talk about the philosophical background of Article 14 of the Constitution of India. Nobody even will oppose reservation in any form. Even if they are affected by reservation. Because of the simple reason they have understood the philosophy. When law students oppose reservation, I always get surprised. Everybody can oppose reservation. Who should not oppose? Who should not oppose? At least who should not oppose in this country? Because you have, if you have understood law, if you are a really law student, you will not oppose reservation. I easily will find out whether that person read law or not. If a person who has gone through the law program will not oppose reservation. Because he would have, if he opposes reservation, that means he has not understood the philosophical background of it. Of what? He didn't appreciate Indra Sane. He didn't appreciate Mandal Commission. He didn't appreciate uh, Baba Sahib's, uh, Dr. Ambedkar's uh, Constitutional Assembly debates. He didn't understand what the, what the fathers or father, founding fathers of the Constitution of India decided. He didn't understand that the reservation was already prevalent in Madras presidency. 
He didn't understand Champak and Durayrajan's case. You understood or not? But my student who came to my class, even a science student who is sitting in my Indian polity is much better. If he just given a degree of law to him today, he is much better lawyer than the qualified lawyer. You go and ask him about the instrumentality for the purpose of bringing element of state. He will tell you how to do it. Who attended my class. Article, 4, Article 12 of the Constitution of India, state. How to bring instrumentality, he knows. Go and ask him whether under Article 12, judiciary is covered or not. Every student who studied in the college, law, law program will say, Judiciary is not covered. But my student will say, judiciary has two elements. One is judicial function. On other side is administrative function. And administrative function is, will come under state. And accordingly, writ petitions can be filed for administrative functions of the judiciary. You understood or not? This, they were able to understand not because they went, went through five-year program of law. In spite of the fact they are agree student, in spite of the fact they are engineering student, in spite of the fact they are from different background, who had no knowledge about law when they entered on August, August month. Today we are in October, not even completed October, and one week leave has already gone by. Rain, Dasara leave, that leave, this leave. Effectively, within one month, they are much better lawyer than the qualified lawyer. You understood or not? Why? What is the differentiation? A law student should unlearn to relearn. Whereas my student, who come from engineering, friends from Agri, are able to understand as it is because they get the best knowledge from my delivery of class. You go and ask them, Champak and Jurai Rajan's case, Champak and Jurai Rajan's case, they are going to tell you how that entire evolution happened from Madras, uh, state of Madras, how it went. This is called philosophy of law. People who understood the philosophy of law became the great lawyers of this country. <coughs> People who understood just law became a lucrative lawyer. You understood or not? There is a difference between great lawyer and Rukhradi Raya. My effort here, why am I coming on a Sunday? Here, law optional is not promoted. Please understand, I am not come here to promote law optional course. I have come here to say to the world out there, in the UPC students who are planning to take up law optional, that you need not be a lawyer. For that only this program is there. If you are a lawyer, good. If you are a non-law student, no problem. This is an advantage for you. So, a fresh mind with a fresh energy grasps more. It kindles the... What happens with the law students? Generally, already college where we studied this. It was so boring. What difference uh, is going to do in the class? Why should I study the same syllabus again? I will do public administration. It matters that the law optional program, I can prove, you call my student who was attending Indian polity class from August law in, in liberal batch of I, the morning batch. Asking questions as a lawyer, he will be able to answer. Sometimes he may not even remember the article, but ask him the philosophy of affirmative action, he will be able to say. <coughs> More than the number of the, uh, number of the article, it is a philosophy that is important. Number you can remember any time. You go and ask him the question on GST, goods and service tax. Law and law students cannot answer. My student who is attending Indian polity can interlink the goods and service tax with the constitution right to equality and answer with respect to input tax credit. This expert level knowledge, how is that my students who are attending Indian polity is able to grasp and then deliver is because philosophy of law. Philosophy of law. Philosophical mind you should develop behind the law. 
you go and ask them <coughs> article sorry today i am not well but still uh, i am cold so pardon me if my throat and i get disturbed here and there because uh, these things cannot be controlled by any kind of uh, meditative process it have its own effect so please pardon me if it is disturbing you but uh, i'll try to deliver my best <coughs> take for example go and ask them in my class how the due process of law and procedure prescribed law procedure prescribed by law got evolved in the respective article of the indian constitution they will say procedure prescribed by law came from uk due process of law came from us like that they will say and when they say due process of law they will say reasonable reasonableness and proportionality this level a student who has just started in one month was able to get as a knowledge i bet you you go and you can come and check in the morning class how the students are responding why am i giving this open challenge to you that is the easy easy way you can grasp the knowledge of law if you are a law student you are already at advantage if you are still a non law student still wants to come into the law optional you are still at advantage because your success ratio in the upsc is very high which i proved with the data second uh, back understanding the syllabus which you have done now you understood do getting back to the college days or you uh, please delete all the content of your college a fresh you attend you're going to get the fresh energy of law knowledge then third is previous year questions very very important previous year question take for example in law of crimes you need not know criminal procedure code examine the undue advantage as defined under the prevention of corruption act 1988 also discuss the persons authorized and the procedure required to be followed while investigating cases that are registered under the prevention of corruption act 1988 actually this is the landmark supreme court judgment that came in that year this question has got appeared twice in the examination twice in the examination so if you prepare the essay it is more than sufficient to write this question again and again take for example distinctive features of the constitution from the constitution how many times they would have asked you same question they have asked for 1 2 3 4 5 five times same question minimum 10 to 15 marks minimum 10 to 15 marks same question same same essay all that you do have to do is question wordings would be different but the content is the same so you will you will constitutionalism essay you will prepare you will fit that constitutionalism essay in any question that they have ask you understood or not then you will prepare constitutional convention answer essay the constitutional convention essay you will fit into any question that they will ask that means in constitution 1 2 3 4 like that we have about 50 questions that's all 50 to 60 questions you have to prepare essay if you prepare 50 to 60 questions essay of constitution you are done with constitution for you will in the examination you will see the question on constitutional convention the word constitutional convention comes oh you know oh you have to comment about constitutional convention you will not even think in a minute but you know what is the content to be right written you understood or not the boundary is clear the boundary is clear so that guidance will be provided in the class if you are taking up the law option as a subject people who are from law option students were taking up from a non law background <coughs> as you are fresh to the subject 
you need not worry you just have to go through the previous question paper that's all only previous question paper and give time to this time for the study so this is about law optional This is all about the law option. If you have any doubts, I am ready to answer. And I will take up the questions. Is there any question? On the unmute panni uttarunga. Online. Yellow questions ke. Unmute Pani Nanga. Yes. Questions? You don't worry about minor act or major act. I think you are preparing for judiciary. You are not preparing for judiciary? Okay. People only prepare for the judiciary will think about minor act, major act. That nothing like it. What I told you is a syllabus. Within that you prepare essay and prepare that is more than sufficient. You don't classify anything like minor act, major act. It's not act that is important, the principles are important. You understood? There is no section number that is important here. <coughs> law option. And the importance is the principles of law. You understood? Then, what is the question? Any question? Any question? And students who are online, can you please uh, post your questions? You can unmute and speak to me. Let's have an interactive session, my dear friends. Let's have an interactive session. <coughs> unmute Panamuni, ma. My dear friends, uh, you can unmute and speak to me. My difference, you can unmute and speak to me. Okay. Anyway, if you have any doubts, uh, uh, and we will be starting our law optional session from this month end onwards, it will be, uh, the timing will be announced by the uh, academy, and you can definitely attend and get benefited. I will be teaching you the law optional program. Uh, it will, the class will span about four to four and a half months, and uh, there will be a classroom session with a legal current affairs update plus test series and also live interactive session. We will definitely have a uh, wonderful time interacting with and understanding the principles of law. I guarantee and assure you that you will enjoy the sessions and uh, it will also put you into the success, uh, uh, highest success rate possible in the UPSC law, uh, UPSC examination. I wish you all the very best and uh, please uh, in, uh, just inform your name who are interested uh, to take up law option. How many of them are planning to take up law option? Yeah. Okay. Online, how many of them are interested to take up law option? Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, myself, Monisha. I'm pursuing my ah. final year BLLB degree. From? from KK Psychology, it's a correspondence course. Actually, I'm pursuing my law degree via correspondence. Ah. So, I would like to ask about the main test practice. Okay, so you are in the fifth year law? Yes, sir. How will you do, uh, so law program from which college? It's KKC Law College, Puttur. Uh, it's in Tirupati. <laughs> Okay, okay. So it is a correspondence. You can't do law in correspondence. Sir? 
So actually in that you college we used to attend only examination. No sir, actually in that college we used to attend only examinations. So it's okay. It's a regular college. It's like it's a regular college. Okay. Yes, oh no yes, problem. Sir. You tell yes, me what is the what is the what is the doubt you have, ma? So what about the main test practice and series in our course? It will happen periodically, ma. As we complete the every chapter on everyday okay. basis and also weekly. Uh, test will be conducted. Essays you have to write, and we will give the practice of essays as well. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Definitely. All the best. Thank you, sir. All the best. You are from which place? Chennai. Yes, sir. I'm from Chennai. Okay. What is it? You are doing directly five year law. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. After to after completion of my twelfth. I joined the yes. integrated course. And uh, uh, if it's you are not attending college, you are preparing for UPSC full time. Yes, sir. Okay. No, sir, not like that. Now I have started the preparation. Okay. 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 All the best. Thank you, sir. Okay. Then, what else is the question from others? Or online? People are from online, of course. Questions? Okay. Anyway, all the very best. And if you have any questions, you can post to the academy. And I will definitely answer. And uh, I look forward to meeting you all in the class of Law Optional. Thank you.